Andrew Klein here, video 12 of my video compositing series. Uh, you guys are awesome for watching this far. Uh, I've got just a few more videos left. This is my final Maya video of the series. Uh, the final videos after this are all in After Effects, videos 13 through 16. So uh, what I want to cover in this video is now that we've kind of created all of these render layers, I want to talk about how to render them out and uh, render them out and manage your scene effectively. Uh, this is actually my completed version of the scene. It's a little bit different than what we were building previously. Uh, here's my master layer, which I originally had. Uh, here's my foreground character layer, which uh, I've named after my character here, uh, very similar to what I had seen previously. Uh, here is my shadow casting layer, uh, because I didn't even need those columns. I had removed them out in my actual scene, so it's just him in the background, but the materials are exactly the same. The overrides are exactly the same. Uh, here's my reflections layer, pretty much exactly what we had just made. Uh, all of my lights are in here. you got to make sure you have your lights in those reflections and shadow casting layers, or else you're not going to get a shadow, because there won't be any lights. you got to make sure the lights are in, or else you're not going to see your character, because it won't have any lights to illuminate it. Uh, I have two extra layers in this uh, render layers setup uh, that I did not actually go over in this tutorial because I had covered them in uh, my other sort of uh, scene files. But I do have a depth image. Uh, here's my all white uh, element to kind of mask out my background and my sky. And in my render passes here, uh, this is where my depth pass is associated. Uh, I also have an ambient occlusion uh, layer. Uh, this has an occlusion texture on everything, and uh, this is uh, one extra layer that I have also created. So we've got all of this set up in here. It looks completely black in this uh, setup. So this is all here. Now, if I want to render all of this out, uh, I want to make sure that all of my checkboxes, uh, the render checkboxes, are active. So I'm going to make sure they're all green checkers and not red X's in this section over here in the render uh, layers menu. So they're now all active. That's the first thing that I want to do. Uh, next up, I want to go to my render settings window. I'm going to go to my common tab and kind of take a look at my common tab. So here, uh, under image size, I can set up my image size uh, for rendering. I'm using HD 1080, which is Blu-ray size. That is a 1080p, uh, a 1920 by 1080 image. Uh, my size is in pixels, obviously. My resolution is 72 dpi. That's the most the screen can show. And uh, I am pixel aspect ratio of 1.0. This is square pixels, uh, and this is what you are going to want. You do not want, if you see a pixel aspect ratio of like 0.9 or 0.91, don't use those. Those are DV, NTSC pixel aspect ratios. Uh, those are used on standard def film recording. Uh, for pretty much everything you do in 3D, I'd recommend using a 1.00 pixel aspect ratio. That is square pixels. Uh, I am rendering from my rendering camera. Uh, that is, uh, just to kind of show you, this camera angle here that I've set up for my shot. Uh, I'm rendering from that rendering camera. Uh, I've got my frame numbers set up uh, actually in this master layer. Uh, it's 46 by 46, just the first frame. In every other layer, uh, I want to render frames 46 through 570. And uh, just kind of going back through here. I did not have this set up previously. So these are kind of weird numbers because when I was setting this up, I was using this for a uh, re-render and part of the scene was already rendered. So just making sure I have everything here ready. Uh, create another layer override right there. So it's rendering frames 46 through 570, which is the whole duration of my timeline, except for my master layer, the background, which I only need to render frame 46 to frame 46, just one frame. Uh, I'm rendering uh, with a name.number.extension because I'm rendering multiple frames. If you're doing test renders or if you're like in a class or something where you're only needing to render out one image, you can just choose name.extension single frame. That way you don't render out any images besides the single frame at all. So that whole frame range is going to go away. Uh, but I'm currently rendering name.number.extension with a frame padding of three. Uh, that means that uh, since I have 570 frames, my frames are going to be named out something like shot uh, number would be shot frame one, uh, then the extension uh, TIFF. The format that I'm using with a frame padding of three means it'll be called shot.001.tiff. 
shot 002.tiff, shot 003.tiff, uh, all the way to shot 570.tiff. Uh, if I have a frame padding of one, or if I turn this all the way back down, what's going to happen is my images are going to come out shot.1.tiff, shot.2.tiff, uh, etc., onto shot.9.tiff, and then shot.10.tiff. The problem that might happen as you put this together is it might look at frame one and then frame 10 and think that those two frames belong back to back instead of frame one and two being back to back. So you always want to pad your frames with zeros uh, to make sure it has the capital uh, correct casing for that. Then in my file name prefix, I've done some pretty interesting stuff here. I'm just going to delete this out to uh, re-show you uh, what's going on. By default, it's going to look like this. It's going to say not set using scene name. Now what I like to do is I like to set up dynamic names for my file setup. Um, just to kind of take a step back here, I've already set my project directory. Uh, you can set this, like in this case, I'll set it to my desktop or something. Set up my project directory. If I render this out right now, it's just going to render out all these layers. I might want things a little bit more organized than this. And what I may do is I might hold down right click in my file name prefix window. And first, I'm going to choose insert scene name. Then I'm going to hit backslash. Then I'm going to choose right click, insert layer name. Then hit backslash. Then I can hold down right click and choose insert pass name. I might also choose in this render pass, instead of just doing pass name, I might hold down right click and choose insert layer name underscore insert pass name and here's what's going to happen if I render out right now it's going to create a folder on my desktop in an images directory the folder is going to be called completed because that's the name of my Maya file that is the C name it's going to dynamically make a folder the backslash tells it to make another folder inside of that named after whatever layer I'm currently on that would be my master layer Inside of that, it's going to make my images named dynamically after my layer and pass. So I'll have images called master layer underscore shadow pass, master layer underscore um, diffuse pass, master layer underscore specular pass. And then I might have one like uh, character name master underscore beauty pass, character name underscore master shadow pass. Uh, it's going to dynamically name all of this out when I hit render. And uh, just to kind of show you what that looks like, I'm not going to do a batch render now. Uh, you'll see here, here's a render setup where I've kind of already put this all together. It has created a folder for me, and uh, it's created these folders with names that match up to my um, layer names. And uh, then it has named out my images with the layer name underscore the type of render pass that it is. Uh, here in my master layer, I've got a folder called master, the name of the layer, followed by the type of render pass, followed by the frame number, and then TIFF. So this will dynamically name out all of your images when you hit render, which is exactly what you're going to want to want to uh, have this all uh, work cohesively for you. So uh, this has been video 12. Um, the only thing left to do is now to go to render and hit batch render. And uh, on the other side of your batch render, you'll have all of your individual render passes that uh, in the next video, video 13, we can start compositing. Uh, in video 13, we're going to look at how to import these into After Effects, and we'll start putting this all together. Uh, see you guys in video 13.